Hey guys. Oh my god, it's over. It's done. I have finally read Harry Potter. Um, wow. It only took me multiple years. For a period, we were unsure whether I was gonna ever finish the series. But I did. You don't understand how good it feels to know that like, I don't have to avoid Harry Potter memes ever again, you know? I don't have to go through Twitter and as soon as I see a fucking lightning bolt and some glasses, I'm like, it feels really liberating knowing that it's impossible for me to be spoiled for this series now, so I can chill. Literally so much shit happened in this book that like, it's impossible for me to have captured every reaction and whatever the fuck. I was thinking in my head like, cool, I'm gonna do the same thing with the last books. I won't start like recording myself reading any of this until, you know, probably about here. And less than a quarter into the book and like, eight people were dead already. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Now that I've read all the books, I can 100% confirm that Half-Blood Prince is my favorite book. This one just kind of fucked me up and that's pretty much it. What a ride. Still haven't seen all the movies though. I still need to watch Half-Blood Prince, both parts to this book, and then all the other random ones that apparently are part of the Harry Potter series now. I really, really want to do two things, okay? First of all, I wanna actually make a video doing this. I wanna go through and watch all of my vlogs and react to some of my first conspiracies for the series because there are some things that happened in this book where I feel like the idea was planted in my head ages and ages ago. And then there are some things where like everything makes sense, like questions from books way earlier were answered. So I think it'd be interesting to go through and do that. But I also like, <laughs> I know I just finished the series, but I know I definitely wanna reread the books at some point because this is a series that is probably even better the second time you read it. You can notice all of the little details that were planted in the first books. Knowing everything about, oh, here's another thing, Snape and Lily. That whole storyline, okay. I feel like I've seen a lot of discussion. I haven't really looked into it, obviously, because I didn't want to spoil myself, but I've seen like a lot of threads and shit where people are like, is Snape a redeemable character? And I'm like, I don't understand how this person can be redeemable. And so up until I read that, I was like, there's no way that this guy is a redeemable character at all. I just don't see it. And you know what? Like even now, the fact that Harry names his kid after Snape, I don't understand like at all because what the fuck? Anyway, I think I'm just gonna leave it now and we'll just get into the vlog. So without further ado, the final vlog. I have missed you. Did you miss me? Guys, we are on the last book. I started reading this yesterday. I'm like 100 pages in. First of all, Tonks is Bellatrix's niece. Like, is this something that we were supposed to know the whole time and I just like missed that detail? Cause like, I feel a bit caught off guard. Also Dumbledore's backstory, the book that Rita Skeeter wrote and all of the articles and stuff. Slander. The tabloids are garbage, but it's really weird because you never actually think about Dumbledore's backstory. I know I've never, he's just always been like, the old, wise, old figurehead. You don't question where it came from, it's just always been. Like that kind, of, that's kind of how I view Dumbledore. Also, I can't believe Hedwig fucking died. But like so chill as well. The book is like, oh yeah, Hedwig got hit. Rip, see ya. She had a good run. Anyway, this is what's happening now. Excuse me, I need to mourn. George loses his ear. Mad-Eye Moody dies. And somebody in their Order of the Phoenix group snitched on them. Somehow they found out the real date that they were moving Harry. They were moving, you know, you know the story. And they had like the seven Harrys and oh, I was really clever. But like somebody in that group snitched on them. Anyway, I'm going to keep reading and I'll update when something interesting happens. The more that gets revealed about Dumbledore's past, the more I'm intrigued about him. Also, Scrimmager is dead. The ministry's fallen, it's gone to shit. We aren't even a third of the way into the book yet, for fuck's sake. That fight with those guys at that all night cafe came out of nowhere. Fucking hell, they're safe now, they're a grim old place. Sorry, I'm like addicted to these chips. So I just read the Ministry of Magic's infiltration thing. That was so intense. I feel like there was so much room for error, for everything to fuck up and go wrong, and it didn't. I don't know what's happening now, but they've made it out of the ministry. They're hiding out in this forest, so they're using the extendable ears to eavesdrop on Ted Tonks and the goblins. And they've just said that the sword of Gryffindor that was hanging in um, Dumbledore's office this whole time was a fucking fake. And no one knows where the real one is. It was used by Dumbledore to destroy the ring Horcrux. Um, and since it's like, fuck, what's the, imbibed? I don't know what that means. Absorbed the basilisk venom. It can be used to destroy the Horcruxes. Now they need to find it though. 
Hi. Also, Ron has cracked the shits and abandoned them. He's expecting Harry to know all the answers and like have this rock solid plan and like know everything. But he's literally done nothing to help them. He's just been like complaining. He's fucking annoying me at this point. We're up to chapter 18. Okay, so they went to Godric's Hollow and they visited the Potter's Graves and the old house. And then they found this old woman called who claimed to be Bethilda Bagshot. Bethilda, I guess is how you say the name. It wouldn't be Bat Hilda that just she was acting so fucking strange. I was like Okay, she's either lost her shit and like forgot that she can do magic, forgot that she can speak, has no idea what day it is, like that kind of situation, or some fucking bullshit is about to happen. And what do you know, some bullshit happened. She led Harry upstairs away from Hermione. Oh, it was creepy as. And then it turned out to be Nagini the snake. The snake just like pops out of this woman's face. And when I tell you it was fucked, it was fucked. I started speaking to him, but in parcel tongue, which is why he wanted to lead Harry away from Hermione, because if she spoke around Hermione, Hermione would have figured it out. Voldemort came, they got attacked, like, everything just happened so fast. I was reading something and then like all of a sudden they were twisting into some portal and then Voldemort was there and then Harry was Voldemort and then Voldemort like couldn't get to them and then they disappeared. I honestly don't even know. There was a flashback to when Voldemort murdered Harry's parents through Voldemort's eyes um, and then somehow they ended up getting away. Harry's wand is broken. Which first of all, how is he gonna get a new one or get his wand repaired? Voldemort has like captured the, what, only two good wand makers in the wizarding world, I guess. What's gonna happen when him and Voldemort face off because they're not gonna have the, the twin cores anymore? Anyway, look, I'm gonna keep going. You literally can't catch a break. It's like bam, death, bam, plot twist, bam. They're trapped. They're not trapped anymore. Voldemort. Oh no, they got away. Oh, broken wand. Oh no, twist. Another death. You just can't catch a break. So this is where we are now. Okay, they destroyed the locket Horcrux with the sword. They found the sword in the bottom of the lake. They said that there was someone watching them through the bushes. I feel like it's kind of obvious it would have been the same person who conjured up the doe Patronus. I can't remember anyone who has a, a, like a silver doe Patronus. Also, the Deluminator worked as a port key to get Ron back to them. I'm still kind of confused how that works though. No, was it because they said his name and he was thinking about them and then it transported them back? I'm not, I'm confused. And I've been thinking about Dumbledore's will. He said in the will, left his Deluminator to Ron Weasley in hopes that he would think of him when he uses it. So does that mean that they need to use the Deluminator while thinking about Dumbledore in order to reach something? Because if he got to Harry and Hermione by thinking of them and then they said his name. But I don't know if it was because he was thinking about them or because they said his name. I don't know. I'm kind of confused at how that worked. I'm on page 400. Um, I just read the Deathly Hallows chapter, the story about the three brothers. There's an un beatable wand, a stone that brings people back to life, and an invisibility cloak. Obviously they already have the invisibility cloak because they have a real cloak that doesn't deteriorate with age and blah blah blah. They obviously have the cloak. So the other three, obviously the other three are real. Think like how reckless they have been with that cloak throughout the years given like how invaluable it is. Ditched in a forest, left in a hallway. The most powerful one, the elder one, is Dumbledore's wand, right? I don't know how I know this. I'm not sure if it was like hinted in an earlier book and I'm like remembering or if this is just like something that I know inherently because like it's not something I was spoiled on but like I, I think maybe this is one of those things. There are some things where there's just like no escaping like the knowledge of and I think the Elder Wand is one of them. I think because I've seen like photos of merchandise throughout the years and they have like the Elder Wand and it's like Dumbledore's wand and I remember like what his wand looks like from the movies and shit. If that's supposed to be like a huge plot twist later on then I already know so that's been ruined. But there's a stone that brings people back from the dead which I'm not sure if that's the Philosopher's Stone or if it's something else. I can't remember. There was some fact about the Philosopher's Stone. Fucking I can't remember. I don't know if that's going to be the stone or not. I feel like maybe it is. What other stone has been mentioned? in this series like anyway so that's what we're at now okay i'm back i'm on the floor i think we're gonna live read this chapter the chosen one has chosen to fuck them all over because harry said voldemort's name now there's a bunch of i don't know what they are death eaters bounty hunter people and they have them cornered and amazing so so it's grayback grayback and like a bunch of other people 
I guess their faces are really like swollen. They can't actually recognize. And they're trying to like lie about their identity. I don't know if I even said they're in the woods. Have I said that they're in the woods? Fuck, I don't remember what I've updated and what I haven't. They're in the woods, they're on the run, and then Ron came back to them. Yeah, I said all this, didn't I? Ron came back to them, then Harry said Voldemort's name, now they're surrounded. Yeah, okay, cool. We're up to date, beautiful. Fuck, now they've found the sword. Now he's got no wand, he's got no sword. Fuck's sake. Now they're gonna get captured. They caught them. They're bringing them to the Malfoy mansion where they're gonna hand them over to Voldemort. He can't even tell if it's Harry or not. Surely their faces aren't that messed up that even Draco can't tell. They've brought him to the mansion and they're like, oh yeah, Draco, like, is this Harry, Ron and Hermione? You went to school with them? And he's like, oh, I don't know. They can't even tell if the scar is a scar or not. Fuck, they're fucked. They've got no wands. They're actually screwed. Oh my god, okay, so they're in the dungeon and Luna's in there with Ollivander and the goblin. Oh my god, stop yelling, Ron. Fucking stupid. Okay, so shit has hit the fucking fan. They're in this dungeon. Everything's fucked. They don't have wands. Everything's fucked. Dobby has appeared out of nowhere. Apparently he can get in and out of the cellar because elf magic is different to wizard magic. So Dobby has taken Luna, Dean, and Ollivander to Bill and Fleur's house. Oh, okay, Grip Hook lied about the sword and he said that it's a fake when it isn't. Oh fuck, is this where Dobby dies? No, no. I knew he was gonna die, but like, I was not expecting that. He died rescuing seven people. That's like, what a way to go out. And most importantly, he died a free elf, okay? They broke into the bank, right? With Grip Hook. Who betrayed them? Like straight away, oh my God. I knew something would go down with the goblin because after Bill said, never make a deal with a goblin, especially over like something that they've made. If something was made by goblins, if a wizard buys it, they just consider it as like the wizard borrowing it and like, I don't know, they're really weird about like the shit that they make. So I was like, cool, Grip Hook's gonna fuck them over, like no, no doubt. Lo and behold, he did. He took the sword, however, they got Hufflepuff's cup. They have another Horcrux now, but they have no way to destroy it. Harry had this vision, Voldemort like, oh, it's actually kind of funny. He goes into Voldemort's mind and Voldemort's like, oh no, my Horcruxes are at risk. Let me think of every location that I've hid them in. And he like starts going through them. And I was thinking like, okay, if this is how we find out where the last Horcrux is, then this is such a cop out and I'm disappointed. He conveniently lists all of them except the last one. He's like, and the last one at Hogwarts in that secret location where I hid it at Hogwarts. He visualizes every other location. This one that was hidden in the cave, and then this one that was hidden at this exact location. Oh yeah, and the one at Hogwarts, but I'm sure that's fine. So now, it's a race to see who gets to it first. Okay, so Hogwarts has turned to complete shit. It's turned into a Death Eater wasteland. Now we're reconnected with Dumbledore's army. The teachers had this face off with Snape, and then Snape, who just jumped out of a window like the slimy rat that he is. I literally hate that guy. They're barricading the school. Voldemort's about to arrive. Shit is about to well and truly hit the fan, and I'm just trying to prepare myself for at least Seven deaths. Can't wait for like everyone to die. Let's do this. Let's go. Okay, so he's run into the ghost, um, the gray lady, who apparently is, what's her name? Rowena Ravenclaw, the house head. Her daughter is the gray lady, the ghost. And she's saying that she stole her diadem and she's saying that she hid it in a hollow tree in a forest in Albania. And then she told Voldemort where it was. So that's how he found it. Okay, so just to update you on what's happening. He ran into Ron and Hermione. They went to the Chamber of Secrets and they got a bunch of Basilisk fangs. He hid it in the room of requirement. Have I spoken about Aberforth? I don't think I have. 
Oh my god, my camera's gonna die. No. Okay, so the diadem, they're looking in the room of requirement and Malfoy, Crab, and Goyle are in here, of course. Oh my god, like straight up Crab just like trying to use the Avada Kedavra curse and just kill them. Are you serious? Is this really what we've come to? Just like people just shouting out Avada Kedavra? Crab is fucked. And Crab died. Oh my god, when you start like shouting killing spells and then you're the one that ends up dying. Is it bad that I don't feel bad that Crab died? And as if he saved Mal- that he literally just tried to kill them and he like saved his life. <laughs> I'm definitely not that much of a bigger person. Like, I would be petty and be like, if you're gonna light a fire and try to kill people and shout killing curses at you, like, I'm not gonna turn around and try to save your life. Like, screw you. You started this mess, like, get yourself out of it. <laughs> Can we just talk about Percy? Hello, minister. Did I mention that I'm resigning? Like, that's his one-liner. <laughs> oh. Oh, Fred. Oh, that shit. Oh, what a way to go out. Man, that's actually so sad. Oh, that's actually so sad. He died laughing at his brother's joke. I'm not like shocked over this death because I knew that Fred was gonna die. I got spoiled for that. So like I knew it was coming and like we're on the last book. We're in like the last few chapters. I kind of expected it. Oh, and that's it. Two deaths. I have a feeling like Lupin is gonna die as well. I feel like he's gonna die. Cause like Tonks has been running around looking for him. Like he's probably dead too. Sirius died, like Lupin's probably gonna die as well. Cause he's like a significant enough character, but also enough of like a side character that like, like Hermione wouldn't die, but like Lupin would die. Or Tonks will die. One of those two will die, I bet. I actually bet. And you know who else? Kingsley Shacklebolt. I'm back. I've been reading. Okay, so I'm reading chapter 34, The Forest again. So they went into the Shrieking Shack and Voldemort basically just turned around and killed Snape without a hesitation. He believed that he wouldn't be able to master the Elder Wand unless he killed Snape. Man, wow. Snape kills Dumbledore, gets his wand. The wand becomes Snape's, I guess, with how it kind of works with like wand ownership, I guess. Voldemort takes the wand but he can't truly master it because he's not the, he doesn't like rightfully have the wand. He needs to kill the owner or defeat the owner, right? Snape killed Dumbledore and then, so the wand becomes Snape's. Voldemort took the wand, but because the wand I guess now is loyal to Snape and so Voldemort now had to kill Snape. Yeah, anyway, basically Voldemort just turned around and was like, I need this wand even though you've been a loyal servant to me and you just killed Dumbledore, see ya. Either way, I don't think it's necessary to kill for ownership. Like, but he just went to that extreme and just killed Snape without hesitation. Cause he was like, need the wand, murder. That's like next level. Uh, anyway, so they're in this shack and they come out and they're talking to Snape and like talking to Snape. Snape is dying on the ground. He's saying like, take it. And like, he has this weird silver shit like coming out of his neck, which at first I was like, is that unicorn blood? And then I realized that I was just a fucking idiot and they're clearly memories. His last words were, look at me to Harry. And then they had like this weird eye contact and then he died. So now they're gonna look at his memories. I'm actually so curious to see. Maybe this is gonna explain like all the shit behind Voldemort. What is this chapter that I just read? That, okay, that is completely fucked. So I just read The Prince's Tale. Snape was in love with Harry's mom, Lily Potter. They were best friends growing up. He's spent this whole time working with Dumbledore against Voldemort. This whole time for like 17 years to like, I don't know, undo his mistake. I don't know what he think, like since he led Voldemort to her and that was the reason for her death, it's like, I don't know, his way of like trying to reverse his mistake or make up for it somehow. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my God. Oh, I wish I was recording that. Why did I not do that? Oh, I wish I was recording myself. That was probably like the one twist that I should have like had, had been recording. And I fucking didn't record myself. I'm so sorry. That is some heavy shit. I'm actually speechless. I can't even, I can't even think right. Like, fuck, that is one character. That is some character that she created. Like, think of how, oh fuck. Think of him like killing Dumbledore, knowing the people that he would, he has actually been working with. All of these people that he has been like dedicating the last 17 years of his life to work with would, then like fucking hate him after that and like 
effectively sever all of those relationships, completely break all the trust between those people and him. And like, they're the people that he was actually loyal to this whole time. But he couldn't tell anybody because then it would ruin everything. It would ruin the plan that him and Dumbledore had. And he had to let everyone believe that he was evil, even though was like forced to do something like that, like killing Dumbledore for the plan to work. That is like a real, that's a really, really fucked up thing to think about. Fuck man, his character like makes a lot more sense now when you think about that. Like his hatred for Harry isn't just like really ridiculous because he didn't like his, his dad in, in high school. Harry represents not only his dislike for James and that he looks so similar to him, but like Lily died for Harry and like none of his actions are right or okay like let's be real he's still a piece of shit at the end of the day he did it all for the wrong reasons because like he's not he doesn't give a fuck about Harry he doesn't give a shit about anyone except for Lily oh, and you know what like I've seen so many posts on social media I've avoided them obviously I didn't like read into them because I'm not trying to spoil myself but like I've seen so many discussions about like is Snape a redeemable character and I've always thought like, what the fuck do they mean? Like, he's just a dick and that's it. Oh man, like, I don't think a character like that, I don't think it's as simple as like, oh, he's redeemable or, oh, he's not. Because I don't know, I just think like, that is one fucking well thought out, really well crafted character. It's not like he has to have some big backstory that completely redeems him and it's like, oh wow, he was a good guy the whole time. Like, cause, not really, but like a lot of his actions are not justified, but they make sense now. And like, that's the beauty of this fucking random ass plot twist. <laughs> well, it's not really random when you think about it, but like this, this out of nowhere plot twist. Even his, fuck, even his like hatred for Neville, you know? You know, he's got that weird grudge against Neville, always picked on Neville. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is a kid whose parents died as well like well, literally what has he done you know when you think about it neville in a parallel world neville would have been the chosen one and voldemort never would have gone after harry and lily never would have died so like i think what makes his character so like three-dimensional and human is the f the way he acts towards these people is very human anyone who is that unhealthily obsessed with one person and for them to die like Obviously, he's not gonna have a well-balanced and like, you know, healthy attitude towards it after. He's not gonna look at things in a, in a sane way. He's going to be the type of person that holds some fucking irrational grudge against a random child that's done nothing. Because like, for anyone to be that like unhealthily obsessed with one person, of course he would also act like that. Of course he would take out his his resentment in a way like that like bullying these children who've done nothing because they represent something to him like it makes no sense but it makes perfect sense and like that's it's kind of mind-blowing to think about dumbledore was dying this whole time and it was like agreed upon for ages that he was going to kill him dumbledore like begging snape at the end he wasn't begging for his fucking life he was begging him to go through with it oh that's that's messed up. I'm so fucking impressed. This whole time you just look at Snape and you're like, he's just a stereotypical like evil villain, you know? And there's like nothing else to him. He's just mean for the sake of being mean. One dimensional like token villain this whole time. And now I'm like mind blown. This isn't even something that JK Rowling just pulled out of her ass for the last book to like make a huge plot twist. Like this makes sense. This is something that makes sense throughout the entire series. And when you trace every interaction with Snape back to his history with Lily, like everything fucking makes sense perfectly. She must have had that planned from like the very, very beginning. Oh my God, I need to take a break. I don't think I can like mentally handle any more of this book today. I've read one more chapter. I'm up to 35 now. Voldemort gave Harry one hour to meet him. One thing that I don't think I spoke about yesterday was Dumbledore essentially, basically his whole life, keeping Harry alive just so that he could die at the right moment. Because he wanted him to die after all the Horcruxes were destroyed and then Harry was like the last Horcrux and then Harry had to die. Like this whole time, Dumbledore knew that Harry was gonna have to die at some point. That is just so wrong. Harry realizes this, knows that he has to die in order to truly beat 
Voldemort. So he goes to meet with him with the purpose of like letting Voldemort kill him. Oh, like what kind of bravery that would take to like willingly walk into your death like that, like knowingly walking towards your death to do something for the greater good. That's like a level of bravery that you would just not expect from a 17 year old boy. Like, that's fucked. Anyway, Voldemort, like, Voldemort killed him. I, it's like he killed him, but he didn't. Like, I know he doesn't die. I'm just confused because I know that Harry Potter doesn't die. So I guess I'll see in the next chapter, like how he somehow stays alive. Guys, I'm so close to finishing this book. Like seriously, I've got like what, two chapters left. Okay, so Harry is in like limbo, I guess, like purgatory. Apparently purgatory is King's Cross Station. So the way that this was explained, Voldemort, when he took Harry's blood back in book four or five, I can't remember which one. I think it was Order of the Phoenix. Okay, basically, like, Voldemort killed the part of his soul that was in Harry. Harry's soul is still alive somehow because the fact that Voldemort used Harry's blood to bring him back to life. Because of, like, Lily's enchantment, because of Lily's enchantment and her blood or something like that, no, Harry's blood, as long as her enchantment lives in Harry's blood, Fuck, this is so confusing. Now that is like in Voldemort's body, as long as Voldemort's alive, Harry's soul is alive. I'm kind of confused, but like apparently that's the reason why. Okay, my camera is like trying to die, so I'm gonna be really brief. Snape never mastered the wand. He never defeated Dumbledore because they had an agreement this whole time that Snape was gonna kill him. So it was like, he didn't defeat Dumbledore because he couldn't have, it wasn't possible. Draco defeated Dumbledore by disarming him, but the fact that Harry disarmed or defeated Draco like weeks beforehand, it was like something about whether like the wand was gonna be able to recognize that like its owner had been defeated and then it, if it would like default to Harry and then when Harry uses it it would like recognize that he beat Draco some shit like this I don't know it's getting really confusing <laughs> like Voldemort is dead it's like the series is over basically there's one more chapter left but like the series is done Voldemort died he tried to kill Harry Voldemort's curse rebounded against him and he died from his own curse because the wands worked against each other it's kind of fucked how like Harry full-on just exposed Snape's secret to everybody. Like, that's kind of sad. It's like, he spent like years and years and years hiding that secret and he like wanted to take it to his grave. And then Harry's just like, Snape was in love with my mother and that's why this happened and blah, blah, blah. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> that kind of sucks for Snape. Voldemort is dead. Harry is the master of death or whatever the fuck. Like he's got the wand and the, the cloak and the stone. And there's one more chapter, it's the 19 years later thing. I can't actually believe it. Okay, so I, I didn't film when I finished the book, but I finished the book. I feel so accomplished, I feel so proud. Like I have finished Harry Potter. I've read the Harry Potter series. The ending was really nice. I'm really happy that JK Rowling decided to do that whole 19 years later when Harry and Ron and Hermione, all of their kids are going to Hogwarts. Instead of just ending it with like, oh, Voldemort died, that's it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. It's like just to know like how things all panned out in the future. It was just such a nice way to end the series. I just don't understand why Harry would name one of his kids after Snape. I understand that like, oh, he was so brave and blah, blah, blah. But like, he was still a massive asshole to him and all of his friends his whole time at Hogwarts. You know, fair enough if you want to recognize that like, oh, what he did was really brave and heroic. But like, I probably wouldn't go as far as like naming one of my children after him. I don't know, it's kind of awkward being like, oh yeah, he only tried to kill Voldemort because he was like in love with my mom. And also considering like how mean he was to you and all of your friends your whole time at Hogwarts, like growing up. I feel like naming your kid after him is just like a little bit much. Like, do what you want, but like, why? And you know what? I feel like it ended properly. I don't feel like I'm sad that the series is over or like I want more from the series. I feel like I got everything that I wanted slash needed out of that series. All ends were tied up. I don't know, I just feel like there's there's nothing really that I'm like, that I can think of now at least. I'm very, very like overall happy with the series and how it like panned out. And the amount of plot twists and like shit that was revealed in the last like four chapters of the final book is fucked. But like, oh well, what you gonna do? That's it.
that's it. I, this is the last video. Um, thank you so much for watching this video and all of the videos that I've made for this series. Thank you for following me on this journey of reading Harry Potter. I know a lot of people are like living vicariously through me. I am so happy that I lived under a rock my whole childhood and never really like fucked with Harry Potter because this is like the coolest. I love the fact that I've managed to just capture my reaction to this series almost the whole way through. That's really fucking cool. And like these videos are going to be awesome to have. But yeah, that's it for this video and that's it for this series. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. Goodbye.